very rough, I'm literally making it up as I go along, but um, a very rough outline where the tree branch will be. I've had to play with my pan pastels. This is my first time using them on a commission, so I'm going to test things out first. So here's my test kit. So I've got the actual tools, um, but I also use other normal things. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix on just a piece of white paper first. Let's just see how this comes across. All right, so I need to mix a bit more. All right, so I've actually got quite a few green combinations here, so let's try. Okay. So I'm just doing a few highlights here. So yeah, the idea is it's going to look like wherever you see white is where the sunlight's really coming in strong. And at this point it almost is kind of like painting. And what I might do just to make sure my hand doesn't smudge the rest of it is I'll just be doing, I'll be working from top left down to bottom right. And then that way I don't have to worry so much about my hand smudging. Um, let's see, it might mix a bit of this kind of olive greeny yellow kind of colour. So I've got about four different types of greens. Um, I'm very limited on the actual um, primary colours. Um, I don't actually have any yellow, but I still need to add to the collection. Pan pastels are not cheap, um, so I'll slowly keep adding to them as I need to. But it's kind of good. I do actually have quite a few greens, which is good. But the beauty of them is you can blend them and mix them quite well. But obviously, if I'm missing a few, <laughs> if I'm missing, you know, I'm missing two primary colours, I don't have a good blue. Oh no, I do have a blue, sorry. But I don't have um, yellow. The closest I have to yellow is this, which is not yellow, it's a green. Um, but yeah. Okay, but you can see by doing this blotchiness, this is it's still going to look okay as a background because it's just going to look like the background's super out of focus. And um, the different degrees of how much it blurs is also realistic compared to what it would look like in a real forest. So yeah, I just thought we would we would do I'd do this on camera and show you before we moved on to the body. And I'll make my mind up a bit later if I'm going to include a part of the tree branch or am I going to do that completely in pencil as well. continuing to work on this so what I'm doing there's two different ways I was debating to do this the first way was to do the dark bits first and then do the light bits um, what I've decided to do is the other way around I don't think there's any right or wrong way to it this is just what I've chosen to do and what I'm doing is this would be where like the sunlight is coming through the trees so the extra white bits would be like the bright white light from the sun so it's not going to be yellow the yellow will come about from that bouncing off like leaves and things like that and then what I do is I'm building up the color around but what I was thinking is um, to do this like I'll do the add the green the yellowy green patches which is like what I'm doing now and then what I'm going to do is um, jump into the black bits or well not black sorry the darker bits and then just blend them all kind of together so lay the colors down it's not like paint I don't need to worry well it's like paint in the sense you've got to lay it down but it's not like paint in the sense that I've got to worry about drying or anything like that I can put the 
pigment down and then come back to it. Okay. Because I'm just, like I said, this is an experiment for me of what layers up the best. So this is layering in quite nicely the way that I am was hoping it would. Okay. So what I might do, I'm going to take this off and put the dark one back on. So if anyone's wondering why I do it this way, um, some of you probably already worked it out. Basically, if I tried to use this dark one for light, <laughs> the light is not going to be dark. Any uh, the light's not going to be light anymore. It'll go dark. It'll smudge and go terrible. So let's get the darker greens. I've got like these kind of very nice olive greens and a little bit like a malachite green. Um, so let's do the more mid-tone greens first. I'm just going to draw like a patterning of where they would go. And I'm just making this up, just kind of picture like tree branches, where they would go. Okay. And then, um, and then I'll just do a darker section down here and mix it in a bit. So the idea is up here is going to be lighter than down here because the sunlight would be up here and all the shadows would be in the undergrowth and the understory of the trees. Okay, so you can do this yourself. You can make up your own. If Some people aren't really good at backgrounds and they've said they're not good at backgrounds, that's fine. But if you do want to have a shot at making your own background, this is kind of, you know, if you're doing going for a forest kind of look, um, you just got to think about making it look as blurry as possible, make it look out of focus, like it was taken on a camera and the person blurred the background out. And yeah, just think about where the, the leaves would be, where would the light be coming through, and I'm hoping I can get this looking quite realistic once I'm done. Now, I'm going a bit over the line that I drew for the tree, because pencil, the colored pencils I'm using because they're lipid based, they're, um, they're oil and wax, because I'm using a few different types, um, they will layer up over this pan pastel nicely, um, whereas the pastels, dry pastels will not layer, it won't, you can't do it the other way around, the pastels won't layer up over the pencil too well. So this is just me laying kind of like a foundation layer of color down. So do it very rough, don't need to be super detailed on it. And even up here, because I've only done like a base layer on the monitor's head, same thing. I can go over a little bit. All right, we'll go back into time lapse.
Cool. So what I thought I'd do now is um, just mention that when I'm doing this, so let's say I want a super bright area. So I'll just show you what I'm doing. So what I do is I put the white bit in the middle and then in a circle motion work my way out like in a ring. Because what's going to happen is the pigment's going to be white, like more white in the middle when it first goes down. And then as it mixes with the others or wears off the pad, um, it won't be as white. So you sort of take advantage of that by working in a ring around that white point and blend your way out. And then what I'll do is I'll use a clean pad to go over that again at the very end to make those sections super white. So the very center of here, here, like these like four-ish main areas that are a bit more white. So yeah, as you've seen in the time lapse, I've just been laying the pigment down using these little strokes. So it's like a dab motion, a dab, a dab and a, a, a press and a pull kind of motion. Um, and then that's pretty much what I've just been doing. I've just been going over it um, to try and blend areas out. Um, when you're looking at things that have been blurred like this, they tend to blur out as circles. So in some areas I've done little dots um, where that has happened. And also I'm aware of there'll be rings of, so like here there's a circle and a circle here. So um, that's just how it sort of plays out with the colors and the lighting. Now with the monitor's head, I'm kind of just going straight over the pigment I've already put down. I'm not really worried too much about overlap there for a couple of reasons. One, pastel doesn't, dry pastel doesn't bind very well at all to colored pencil anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. It's not going to stay there for too long. And I'm going to go over it anyway for the details with the color pencils, which is another reason why I wanted to get this background down before doing too much on the head, because, you know, it's just less to, less to touch up if um, I've only really done a base layer on the head. And then all I need to really worry about is more base layer on that. So um, just the white, and that's going, like I said down here, I'd start in the middle and then work my way around in a circle. So that way it's brighter in the middle, which is what it would be. Now here, there'll be a bit of pocket of sunlight coming through here. And you can see that because I've just done white there, it's like, it makes it look even brighter. So if one area looked bright already, even though it was a mix, it's gonna look even brighter still if you just do a white. So that's what I'm doing. I'm focusing on a couple of key areas and I'm just going to make it a bit whiter in just those areas. So I'm constantly playing with this. It's just going to be a, a bit of an experiment. It's really just if you're making up backgrounds like this by yourself, it's just just have fun with it, like enjoy it. <laughs> so like I said, I've kind of got an image in my head of like maybe there's a tree branch coming up through here. And just go from there and then wherever the sunlight would be coming through that's the lighter bits and the good thing about these sort of backgrounds like i've said a couple of times now is that they kind of show up as circles so these key bits like where it blurs on the camera like if it was a camera it would blur as like circles so i'm just sort of blurring this edge now and hopefully that makes the entire piece look a bit more realistic because what that means is the fact the background is blurred, it means that theoretically the detail you'll see in the reptile will appear even more detailed, even more sharp. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty much what I've been doing, layering this up in pan pastel. First time I've tried it. I've seen other artists do it and I'm aware that you can do it and I've um, told others that you can do this because I've seen it done and it's been done beautifully before by other artists that I've watched. Yeah, first time I've personally tried it on a real piece. I've mucked around a little bit just on pieces of paper, scrap paper, so I'm, I'm aware it, it works. But yeah, it's good fun. Good fun making this background. I used to not be a background person. I used to do my subjects just with a white, just whatever color the paper was, just white. But um, the last few pieces I've actually done either a full background or it's been... Um, a detailed element of some sort like you know the animal is sitting 
on or in something so like on a um in a on a rug or a cot or got a blanket over it or something like that but it's been a lot of fun like as I've gotten a bit more confidence in it I'm actually enjoying it and I think it grounds the animal or person if you're drawing a person it, it, it grounds your subject a lot better so yeah super super blurry but that's what I wanted to go for I wanted it to look really blurry so I had showed uh, my client the the idea I had in my head just using photoshop so it wasn't exactly a pretty um, mock-up but it did the job, I hope. It showed what I like to think is a pretty um, faithful impression of what I have in my head without spending the whole time to actually do the piece because, you know, you want the person you're doing the piece for to be on the same wavelength as you. And we're not psychic, so they can't read my mind. So the best way to do it is just do it on face, uh, not face um, do it on Photoshop um, or a similar program and just show them this is the idea I had. What do you think? Yeah, I'm happy with that. So yeah, this was one of the options. Um, so I did about, I think it was six or maybe five options. Depends if you count the option of no background. Um, and then we narrowed it down to three. I think it was the five or six I took to Facebook first and asked, um, um, asked people to vote on it just to help out with what they thought looked best. And, um, yeah, we narrowed it down to three, took it back to the client, he narrowed it, and then he picked out the one he he liked, which was good, which was this one. Cool. So what I'm doing now, I'm still just playing with colours, doing them as circles, like I mentioned before, because, again, that's when the camera, when you take this as a photo and they blur out, it blurs out as circles, so... Some of them aren't looking too good. Some of them I need to fix up. Let's try this. Some of them, I don't, the thing is, I don't want it to look like just smudges. I'd like it to actually look like a proper blurred background. So here, I think that just looks like a smudge. I'll have to fix that. But like, yeah, it's a it's a trial. It's a trial and it's a, um, it's a work in progress. So just keep playing with it. Keep layering the pastel over it until it looks right. Let's see how we go. But I'm happy with that overall. Overall, I'm happy with it. Looks okay. And the, the good thing about this, I can keep adding to it and building it up. There will be a point, though, when the tooth does get saturated, and I don't think I'll be able to do much more. At the moment, though, I can keep building up on it and see how we go. So, yeah, we'll keep going. So the interesting thing as well will be the fact that this the highlight that I mentioned before where the light is going to bleed on top of the foreground if I do this all in pencil I'm gonna to have to mimic a lot of these colors the, pan, the pastel colors in the color pencil to make them match okay but yeah hopefully this has been interesting and that people have taken away you know something from it but yeah thanks for watching and if you've gotten this far thank you so much for supporting you by watching the video I guess so yeah, hopefully it won't be too long for the next update. See you later.